Welcome to this World Communion Service, Worldwide Communion Service. Whether you are a longtime member of this congregation or first time member, you are welcome. Join me in our greeting. Welcome to God's house. We we are delighted to have you here. Remember for God's word. You have come to the right place. Here you will be fed on the life-giving love of God. We pray for God's At the table of the Lord, you will be fed and your thirst quenched. Thanks be to God who provides for our needs. Please join me in our mission statement. Growing the disciples of Christ in the transformation of our community. Our announcements today, um, Emily, I'm going to call an audible on Fuel. Fuel is going to meet at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning because we have to do a double bagging, right. 232 bags. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Fuel team, please note, and we'll be making some phone calls and text messaging to let the rest of the team know about that. Um, Communion offering today will go to Helping Hand, and this helps folks in our community. And for those of you that have forms for charge conference, Ashley would really like to have them tomorrow if you haven't already turned them in. Um, UMW will be meeting on October the 7th at 6.30, and they're going to start a study on being a Mary in a Martha world. Are there other announcements that we need to call to your attention? We want to welcome Pastor Bud Alexander today. Um, you will notice that nothing in the bulletin is exactly as it's going to, was supposed to be. Margaret is not feeling well. 
Corey is at home with Ryan because Ryan tested positive for COVID. So far, Corey is negative. Ryan doing okay now? Ryan's doing much better, and uh, Corey has not been affected physically by it. <laughs> good, good. I understand that the smell of bacon got him out of bed yesterday. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's always a good sign. Today, Bud is going to be here filling in for Corey. And uh, Bud, my mom always, after I became a teacher, and she would be at school, she would say, I used to be Annie, but now I'm Miss Island's mother. So <laughs> you, you have been a pastor all your life, but now you're Corey's dad. <laughs> and we are so glad to have you here with us today. Okay. Our first song, and you might want to dig around and find the faith we sing. That's the first change. We are using the faith we sing because Margaret's not here to play for us. And the second sad change is, <clears throat> I'm your song leader today. And... Um, I, I have a tendency to make a joyful noise to the Lord. So, please stand as you're able. This is a song that's done in two parts. So, um, I'm going to say, you all on this side are part one. Those of you on this side are the echo, part two. And then when we get over on the second page of the hymn, we all join in. I will call upon the Lord. Let's make a joyful noise.
what's printed in our hymn book doesn't match the number of times they sing it, play it on the music. So um, that's okay. It's all good. We do call upon the Lord. Join me now in our historic affirmation of faith. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he stood at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the hands he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, on the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. I'm going to skip the glory because I've forgotten to put in all of a sudden. You might be seated. <clears throat> Join me in the prayer for a moment. God of love and peace, you are with us in all our days and in all our ways. As you walk with the Israelites in the desert when they had given up hope, you came to them with nourishment and you said fast love. As Jesus walked through Jerusalem, healing the sick and those afflicted, your love was made abundantly clear through acts of love and mercy. Be with us this day as we gather to hear your word. Inspire and encourage us in all the ways we do, that we may serve you and faithfully bring the hope and your message of love to your perishing world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second song, our middle song today, when we had the other service on Sunday evening back about 20 years ago, Bob went without faith when it came time to ask for your favorite song. As the dear was the song that Bob always requested. So today, this, I think the reason Bob liked this was this was a very clerical song. So put yourselves in an attitude of prayer, and let's join in singing as the dear. <laughs> Near. For God thought, if the people face war, 
they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people to the roundabout way of the wilderness through the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt, prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Succoth and camped at Ephraim, Eph- 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 on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of fire, cloud by day, to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night, to give them light, so that they might travel by day and by night. Neither the pillar, nor the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place in front of the people. The word of God to the people of God. Well, good morning. I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, Corey and Ryan are doing well. And, uh, but in talking with Corey yesterday, when it seemed everything was sort of falling apart. <laughs> Margaret was sick. Uh, the music was not going to be present. And, uh, Corey and I talked, and so here I am. <laughs> and I'm glad to be with you this morning. I want to first thank you for the warm welcome you all gave Corey and Ryan when they first came and, and continue to share with them. I also want to share the, my thanks for the warm welcome you've given Susan and I when we've been here. Uh, so I'm glad to be with you this morning and glad to, to be able to help in this service. I'm pleased that I can be here on World Communion Day. One of the things I've missed since I retired was uh, presiding over Holy Communion. I was at the Wesley Foundation at Tennessee Tech for many years, and Holy Communion was sort of the, the central part of our experience, our experience of faith. And, and then being in the local church, uh, communion each month was such a, an important part and a, a meaningful thing for me. So I'm glad I could be here with World Communion. I would have missed that today had it not been for these circumstances. I also want us to be able to give thanks for the people of our faith who help us so much. Sometimes when our musicians, we we may take our musicians for granted until they are not here and recognize how much they help us in, in knowing how to share music and experience music as a part of worship. So our prayers especially are with Margaret today for her recovery. And also a prayer of thanksgiving for what she offers to this church's worship. So, when the Pharaoh let the people go, that's how the passage starts. And there are a few phrases in there that I'll point out as we go through the sermon. Uh, The roundabout way being one of them. But before we get to the roundabout way, I want to give you a chemistry lesson. I'm sure you loved chemistry when you were in school, and many of you thrived with chemistry, I'm sure. But in case you didn't, there is a a reaction in chemistry called the Maillard reaction. And it's especially important when you talk about cooking. The Maillard reaction is a, a, a reaction, a chemical reaction, that occurs when you place something with amino acids in contact with high heat. That's what gives grilled food its special flavor. The Maillard reaction happens, and chemicals that didn't exist when the food was raw are created by the high heat, and they give a piece of meat or vegetables their special flavor, that grilled flavor we enjoy so much. And it happens because heat touches something that was alive and something new comes from it. Well, when Pharaoh let the people go, that's sort of what happened to the Hebrew people. Something touched them and created a way of living they had not experienced before. They were now set free. Set free to go to the promised land. 
And <laughs> not in a cruel joke, certainly not, but in the way God often works. God took them not directly, not the shortest route, not the interstate, but on the roundabout way to the promised land. Now, if there's a phrase we might relate to with the way God works in our lives, it might be that phrase, the roundabout way. How many times have our lives taken an indirect journey? How many times have we gone what seemed to be the wrong way, the complicated way, the worst way, only to end up where we needed to be? To share this with permission, I had a student when I was at the Wesley Foundation who always introduced himself. He, he was in our choir, and when our choir sang in local churches, the students would introduce themselves and tell their major in their hometown. And when this young man would introduce himself, he wouldn't say he was a chemistry engineer, chemical engineering major. He would say, I'm going to be a chemical engineer. From the very beginning, he knew that's who he was, what he would become. And he was bright enough to do it. The problem was, a late in his junior year of college, after three, almost three and a half years, over three years, of study to be a chemical engineer, our choir went on a fire tour to Baltimore, and we sang in a homeless shelter. And in that shelter, as we were waiting to sing, the, the people who ran the facility explained how homelessness is is a multifaceted problem. Sometimes people end up on the streets through their own bad decisions. Sometimes it's addiction. Sometimes it's circumstance. Sometimes it's bankruptcy. Sometimes it's drug use. But once you get on the street, they explain it's hard to get off. Because the public service programs that are meant to help them are hard to access. For instance, you can't get unemployment because you don't have a street address. And because you don't have a street address, you can't open a bank account. And because you can't open a bank account, you can't receive even the minimal unemployment that might be available. And so they explain how these multi-level problems exist. Personal choice, bad decisions, a system that is impossible to navigate. And when our young chemical engineering student heard about these problems that began to work at him, he decided to go to law school. So he could help kind of find a way to help people through an impossible system. Now, his parents were perfectly supportive, though it did go against what had become a lifelong plan. It meant rerouting his, his education from being a chemical engineer to three more years of study. But he ended up where he needed to be. Now, maybe your lives have made those kinds of twists and turns. Maybe you made a bad decision here or there. Maybe circumstances have not worked out. Maybe even the system became difficult to navigate. And it's just like God to take these roundabout ways and turn them into something meaningful. The Hebrew people went out prepared for battle ready to hack their way into the promised land. They had been slaves. They were now set free to control their own destiny. They were ready to take control of their own lives. And when God sees who they are, He says, I better take them the roundabout way. Because if they face the thing they're prepared for, they'll become discouraged in turn. So it's not a cruel joke. It's not God being mean. But sometimes the roundabout way is the best way. 
When they leave on their roundabout journey, Moses makes sure to take with him the bones of Joseph. You probably recall that back in Genesis, when Joseph is on his deathbed, he makes his descendants promise that one day, when they return to the homeland, they will take his bones with them so he can be properly buried in his homeland with his family. Somehow, over the 400 years of slavery, that promise has been remembered. And when it's time to go, Moses takes with him the bones of Joseph. Now that's an odd, odd thing to take when you set out on a trip, the bones of your ancestor. But probably many of us have um, symbols of our ancestors that we carry with us. A pocket knife, a rocking chair, a, a favorite dish. Something that reminds us where we came from and who we are. Moses knew how important that was. It's easy to forget where you come from. It's easy to forget who you are. And it's hard to claim a new identity without knowing who you have been. I had a cousin, Jim, who grew up in Texas, and he served in Vietnam. Um, he grew up in rural Texas, and when he got to Vietnam, he was with a unit of guys from all over the United States. Now, when you grow up in West Texas, you learn how to roll your own back in those days, how to take a piece of paper and fill it with tobacco and roll it up and lick it, and that's how you made your cigarettes, and he knew how to do that. When he got to Vietnam, he had some friends who had discovered that you could roll up something other than tobacco in that little piece of paper. Except they didn't know how to roll it up properly. And so Jim, my cousin, taught them how to roll their own. It wasn't tobacco, and he wasn't trying to help them use drugs. But he said, when you're in a unit like that, you help people any way you can. So he developed a, a relationship, a friendship with the drug users in the unit. And one time when they were out on patrol, they set up their camp at night, as they always did. And when you set up camp, it was one man's job to go around and set booby traps around the perimeter of the camp for two reasons. One, if a booby trap went off, it would alert that, alert that danger was near. And then, of course, the booby trap might take care of that danger. Only one person did it because it was a dangerous job. Only one person set the booby traps so that if the trap went off, only one person was injured. And then the next morning, a different soldier in the unit would go around and retrieve the booby traps. And again, only one, one person would do that job. And they took turns. Well, one of these, on one of these uh, missions, it was Jim's job, my cousin's job, to retrieve the booby traps the next morning. And that night, the night before, his friends, the drug users, came to him and offered him a smoke. <laughs> they weren't trying to get him hooked. They weren't trying to destroy his life. They said, try this. It'll just take the edge off when you have to get the booby traps in the morning. And Jim said no. And when he tells that story, he uses this line. He says, in moments like that, you have to remember who you are. The Hebrew people are in a moment like that. They are living one way of life for a new way of life. And they have to remember who they are. That's one reason I'm glad to preside over World Communion Sunday. This meal reminds us who we are. In some way, we are gathered at the table with Christ. We are offered bread and wine from Christ's own hands. We may not be worthy. We may be like Judas or Peter who were in that same room, Judas, who betrayed Jesus, 
Peter who denied knowing him, and yet they received this meal from the hands of Christ. Our lives may not have been perfect. Well, I'll, I'll take out the word may. Our lives have not been perfect. But here we are, at the table with Christ, ready to receive the meal from his hands. This is a moment when we remember who we are. And in God's great care for his people, he set before them a pillar of cloud to guide them during the day, through the day, and a pillar of fire to guide them through the night, through the desert. You may be familiar with the uh, uh, weather patterns of the desert. The desert gets hot in the day. I mean, scorching hot. Dehydrated hot. What a blessing to have a cloud block the sun, giving you a few degrees of coolness and a little bit of shade in that scorching, blasting heat. But then at night, the temperature in the desert can drop 50 degrees from well over 100 to almost 50 degrees. That's a huge change. What better gift than to have a pillar of fire both warming you and guiding you to the promised land. And that fire never left them. It went before them day and night the whole time they traveled on their roundabout journey. Back when they were building the TVA, uh, TVA dams, making the lakes behind those dams, it appears in East Tennessee there was a, a family whose cabin was going to be taken by the, uh, by the dam, by the waters, the lake waters as they backed up. Several houses were going to be taken, and the families in them reached their settlement with the TVA and moved to new houses. But apparently there was this one family who lived in a fairly run-down log cabin who refused to move. They were so determined to stay in place that the old man in the family was ready to fight the bulldozers off with a shotgun. TDA had built him a new house, a brand new comfortable house, a better house than they lived in up on the ridge, safe from the waters. But the old man refused to move. Finally, after a few days of a standoff, the, the TDA men sent in, sent in their female secretary. Perhaps she was expendable in case things went badly. But she decided maybe if they talked to this guy, they might find out what was going on. So she went in and talked to the old man, and the old man said that his grandfather had built this log cabin. He built the cabin and he had laid the stones for the fireplace in his own hands. And when it was finished, the grandfather had built the first fire in that fireplace. Because it was tough times and he had to conserve everything, they made sure that fire never went out because that was their life. It was their warmth, it cooked their food, it provided protection and light. And so the grandfather never let the fire go out. And his Son, the father, had kept the fire going all his life. And now the grandson, who owned the cabin, had kept the fire going. So that same fire had burned in that fireplace for three generations. The old man told the young woman, as long as this fire is here, we're here. Turned out it wasn't about the cabin so much as it was about the fire. So she suggested perhaps they could gather the fire in a bucket and carry it up to the new house and start the fire later. And he agreed. He allowed it only to take part of the fire so that the fire in the fireplace never went out. And she took the new fire up to the new cabin. They started the fire, and then the family peacefully moved to a new land. 
and the fire has never gone out. What a marvelous image for our faith. To know that the God of the Hebrew people lit the fire for them that still burns. The fire that burns for us. Our lives may take roundabout turns and twists and curves. And we may remember and maybe sometimes forget who we are. But we can always cling to the, the, the surety that the fire of God is always burning. And when it touches us, sometimes in a brush and sometimes it might scorch us. When the fire touches us, something new happens. A reaction, a change, something that didn't exist before comes into being. And life is created again. Renewed, refreshed, and taken to a new place where we can be the people of God in a world that needs to know its direction. You have joys or concerns you would share this morning. <laughs> it's a joy to have you here, Brother Well, thank you. It's a joy to be here. And I know we want to lift up in prayer Ryan and Margaret and maybe others who are, who are not well. All right, then let us go to God. Holy God, we pause and give you our hearts for this moment. May you look within us and know what we are praying. And even if we ourselves don't know the words to use, may you understand what we mean. 
May you be, in our, be with those in our world who are wandering. Not on a roundabout way, but who perhaps are lost altogether. May they find their way into the fire of guidance, into the cloud of comfort. May you be with those in our church today who are hurting. Some are hurting physically and some spiritually and some emotionally. And may your grace and care be with them, offering them what they need to find their way. And now may we take our moment to look into your heart, O oh God. May we hear from you what you would have us do. And when you lead us, may we follow faithfully. When we hear your word, may we obey it. When we have a direction before us, may we follow it, even if the destination is uncertain. May we be faithful, O oh God. May you look at our hearts, and may we look at your heart. And may we love one another through the faith of Christ. Amen. Now, as we turn ourselves to this table, to the table of Christ, this day of world communion, I'll read the invitation, but I want to begin by saying Christ invites everyone to this table. As I mentioned a moment ago, Christ invited Peter and Judas and the other ten disciples who all ran away. <laughs> so you don't have to get it right to come to this table. In fact, it's almost like Jesus wants those who get it wrong <laughs> to be the ones who come to this table. So know that this table is open to you wherever you are in your journey. Christ our Lord invites to this table all we love it, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and Merciful God, we confess that we did not love you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so with your people and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. As a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children, let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. Good bread and broke it, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. And then he took the cup, and gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, perhaps he meant as often as you eat, do this in remembrance of me. May this bread and this wine be for us the body and blood of Christ. May it become Christ for us, so that in our eating, our drinking, we remember who we are, and we go into the world knowing we are guided by the power of God. I invite you to come as you are directed to receive communion at the altar and pray as long as you need. This is the table of Christ prepared for you. Amen.
arise and go in peace and go in Christ. Amen. Sends us out. May we go with his blessing.